Welcome again to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the AI module or the Artificial Intelligence module. Um, now the last video that I did um, kind of went a little bit longer than I wanted to, so I'm going to talk a bit faster. I'm going to try and get, um, you know, not be so long-winded. So uh, the nice thing about videos is at least you can go back and pause and replay if you need to, but this stuff's pretty basic. I don't think we're going to be doing anything too incredibly difficult that you'd have to go back and review. But So we'll pick up right where I left off before. We've got this scene open here that we were looking at the different attributes that exist. So one of the things that we can do is uh, we already went over the game editor a while back, but you'll notice that there is um, you know, a user main AI that's assigned to the game. And we'll talk more about how AIs get applied to different objects. But um, what I'm going to do is jump over up here in the top corner. We have those uh, different um, desktops that I explained in one of my previous videos. We're going to switch to the code view. We'll go to the AI model uh, menu, and uh, we have some options to create or open. Um, it'll show you um, some of the most recent ones that you've opened up here as well. Um, so let's jump over to, let's just open up one of these for the heck of it. Okay, so you see that we've got um, within the AI, and what I like about this code desktop is that um, we've got the AI model editor over here, and over on the right we have the script editor, which I was going to cover in another video, but we can just knock them out at the same time since they're related. Um, so for the AI, you have variables, you have functions, you have states and handlers. Uh, variables are just like they sound. If you've done any programming, they're just uh, objects can, that can um, you know, reference information that you store in there. The information can change from time to time. Um, functions are just like they are in other programming languages. Um, you know, They're just a place for you to encapsulate some uh, functionality within a, a little block of code that you can run over and over again. States, um, if you've ever done any kind of um, you know state programming where you want to know if an object is say like a you know maybe it's a player and you want to know uh, you know are they sleeping or are they dying or whatever you can manage states here and then handlers this um, will uh, interact with your game so as you can see here we have stuff like on inner frame that means every time a frame starts that this particular object with this AI is going to do something um, on in it is you know whenever the thing starts up. So that's basically what you have. You've got uh, anytime you click on the plus next to add function, it's going to give you the ability to, you know, add a function. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, they give you some basic code. Now, all this stuff is Lua syntax. It's pretty simple. Um, you don't really mess with much of the um, the extra stuff around here. You just put right where it says write your code here. That's where it goes, and you just put it. I mean, you can come up here and, and label the author and description and whatnot. Um, but the idea is that you that you write your script, and then uh, you know you have the ability to save. Um, there's different view options like whether or not you want to show the line numbers, um, whether or not you want to see the output down at the bottom. Output being you know like um, as you compile the scripts, what the you know the outcome is, uh, whether or not you're going to see the symbols. Um, symbols being you know the um, this is basically the API. So you have all these options over here. I typically don't show that just because as you're typing, um, you know, if we start to type application, if you hit control space, it's going to auto complete that and then it's going to give you other options, um, you know, to complete this, uh, to pull up a function. One of the things that I really love about the autocomplete here is that um, you don't have to, you know, here I just typed in TAG, and the only uh, function out there that has TAG in it is this one that says, you know, get current user scene tagged object. Um, I'm used to autocompletes working where you have to actually start with the get. You know, well, the problem is if you're doing get, uh, there's a million of the, the get functions out here. So if you know you're looking for something with a tagged object, you can just start typing tagged. And as soon as you get to something that's unique, it's going to put it in there for you. So that's pretty nice. Um, there's some of the basic stuff you'll find in an editor. There's undos, there's um, searching or go to lines, mark stuff. Um, you'll want to, whenever you get done with the script, you want to compile it. That actually gets it ready for use in the game. So sometimes I'll go in and I'll change the script, 
but then I don't hit the compile button and you go and run the, the game and you notice nothing changes, it's probably because you haven't compiled and saved it. Um, and then, you know, the window menu here just gives you the ability to close. Because uh, what happens is sometimes you get, you know, all this stuff open and it's handy to be able to say, uh, just close the one that's on or close all or, you know, go to the next or previous or maybe a specific one. I mean, it's usually just as easy to click on a tab, but sometimes it can come in handy. Um, so that's basically all there is to the AI model editor. Um, you know, when you come in to do the handlers, um, I guess I should cover that. So the handlers are some specific ones. You can do custom, but the game comes with, uh, or the game engine comes with a lot of built-in ones. So, um, you know, when you go to add one, you want to pick one of these. Um, if you're going to do a custom handler, then you've got to wire that up on your own, you know, to fire the event and whatnot. Um, same thing with variables. Uh, you're kind of, you know, you have the ability to select certain variables uh, variable types and you can set the initial value um, so you know you have like booleans, numbers, object strings, blah blah blah. So the basics behind the AI model editor is it gives you like a little mini IDE where you can go in and you can code your scripts, um, you can set the variables and things. The idea behind this being that this AI is going to be attached to an object or a scene or well I don't know if you can attach them to scenes but to the game um, they're kind of encapsulated that you get all the functionality you need for that particular object. Um, it's neat that way because, um, you know, if you have a particular way that a camera will follow a player through uh, a level, you can script that into your AI and you can call it like um, third person uh, camera and then you save that. And the next time you need a third person camera, you put a camera in the scene and then you just attach this AI to it and then boom, you've got your, your functionality. So it's a pretty neat way to do it. Uh, works pretty well. And that's about it. Next time we are going to be talking about the log reporter, which works hand-in-hand -hand with uh, running your scripts in the game. And so look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.